find them because we're going to stand together as we sing Showers of Blessing. Let's stand together this morning as we sing, if you are able. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. blessing we need. Mercy drops rumbles are falling, but for the showers we plead. Amen for those showers of blessing. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we think we're just getting little droplets, but we have showers of blessing here today because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it's good to see so many people here today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the showers of blessings. Lord, help us to count our blessings to name them one by one. So Lord, that we will be able to see what you have done in each and every one of our lives. And Lord, I pray that even at this moment, if there are those today who are struggling to get out of bed or even just go anywhere for the house of the Lord, Lord, let them come right now. Lord, let them walk into Harvest Baptist Church late. Uh, Lord, just have your hand upon them. Have your hand upon us, those of us that are here, whether they be here in the building or through the live stream. Lord, uh, not because of who we are, but because of who you are. And we need you ever so much, even in this day and age, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. See our next song here. <coughs> Blessed Assurance. <coughs> Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen, amen. Praising our Savior. So we've talked about showers of blessing and praising our Savior. That's a good challenge, praising your Savior each and every day. And let's praise him now for the pile of encouragements I have before me today. If our usher would come forward, please. 
Um, actually, you might need some help. We can get some help here. Anybody? All right. This is for Nancy. This is for Veronica. So we're going this way, and that's for Nancy Bennett. Thank you, Alex. Come on up here, buddy. And this is for the Justice family. And hey, looks like the Justices have a, an anniversary coming up. Alex? Where are you going, buddy? Here we go. That goes to the Justice family as well. Oh, okay, so go ahead and deliver that one to them, too. All right, there we go. All right, is Peggy here? Peggy, hey, all right, we've got a birthday card for you, for Peggy. And Joshua, uh, can we get this to Josh? Can anybody? Or, yeah, all right, Alex, give that to Mr. Willer there, so we can give it to Josh. All right. And, okay. Will you give this to Mr. Dan Beerline because it's for the anniversary of Gail and Roman? Ha ha ha! In-laws. And that's for Kevin and Veronica as well. All right. Oh, my arms are tired from handing out all those encouragements, and that's good to do. All right. Praise the Lord. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, and uh, so thankful for everyone here today. I do have an announcement. Wednesday night, Wednesday night, after the service... We will need some help moving some things out of the fellowship hall, okay? Uh, because this Saturday, coming up Saturday, is what? Our ladies' fellowship, right? Yeah, right, yes, the ladies' fellowship. And also, ladies, be prepared. Uh, there is a special speaker coming. Uh, her name is Shannon Truckner. Uh, you guys will really enjoy uh, what she's going to bring to the table for you. But there will be taking a special offering, ladies, at that time at the fellowship. So be prepared for that, uh, taking up a little offering for her, for her time coming on out and uh, spending some time at the ladies' uh, fellowship. This Saturday, as it says, at 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Invite someone, all right? Come on out. Uh, I've got some sign-up sheets here. Are you pretty much all set? All right, let's pass those around. Oh, pass that one around. And before you pass this one around, this has to do with the Harvest Baptist, the senior moment on October the 17th at 2 p.m. at the Char House, all right? So this is just a sign-up sheet uh, asked to pass around. So let's see here. I'll just take this down here. There is an age restriction on the Char House, and you will be carded at the door, all right? <laughs> 55 and over. So it's the speed limit, okay? Yeah, okay, some people won't. Yeah, that'd just be rude, all right? Uh, looking forward to that. Senior moment, it's the first of several to come, so be ready for that, uh, for the senior moments. Also, uh, as you can see, we're past the 26th. Thank you so much to the men that came out to the prayer breakfast. As I told them yesterday, uh, that is not the last, so there will be more. Don't feel bad about missing out on that. And also, to some of our teens that couldn't make it to the youth rally, don't feel bad about that. There will be more as well. Uh, Lord willing, there will be a slideshow tonight. Uh, for what happened out there at Bayshore Camp. Uh, one thing I will shed the light on is Harvest Baptist, they won the knockerball tournament, okay? Yeah, so Harvest Baptist teens, yeah, they won the tournament there. So uh, there we go, but there will be more. Uh, as we left Bayshore Camp yesterday, Junietta Baptist was the ones that put it on, and it looks like they're going to do it again next year. So there's plenty of opportunities in teens. If you weren't able to make it, don't feel bad. There's going to be more stuff to come. And now uh, let's go to the next slide. Next Sunday, this is the Goldsworthy family, okay? This is the family that's going to come out to us at the beginning of Music Ministry Month, okay? Uh, that's my good friend John and his wife Carrie, who is actually a good friend of our, my wife and ours, and I'm one of my best friends, Rob, is Carrie's brother. But those are their kids, and that's who will be coming to minister us at the beginning of Music Ministry Month here at Harvest Baptist Church. Um, that's who's going to be with us. They play classical instruments. They play the cello, the violin, uh, the viola they play all that so that's what they're going to be bringing next week and i'll say that and i'll say this with everybody that's coming uh, as you can see this a family is a part of a local church that serves faithfully in their local church is taking time away from their ministries at their church to come be a blessing to us and i would encourage uh, that we be just as much of a blessing to them by coming out uh, to encourage them as they encourage us through the ministry of song. Uh, I know we have Justified Quartet coming on the 11th, and that's going to be a good turnout. I'm well aware of that as well. But also on the 11th, I don't have a picture of them just yet, we have the Riggs family coming for Sunday night. So I would challenge you to come out Sunday night and be an encouragement to the Riggs family as they will be an encouragement to us. Again, 
people taking time away from their ministries, taking time away from their church to come to ours to be a blessing to us. Let's be a blessing to them as well, and you won't be disappointed. Again, uh, just getting ready for our music ministry month. I am excited about that. Uh, just showing, uh, you know, uh, regular people serving in their local church how they do it through the ministry and song and music, because music is a part of worship. So I'm excited about having them come. And now let's get ready to receive our offering. Paul, would you pray over the offering, please? Our next song is Blessed Be the Name. Blessed Be the Name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, mighty Prince of Peace, of all earth's kingdom conqueror, whose reign shall never see. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, we have a special treat today as we've been working on this for a while. We have a special in song by Gloria Wheeler. All right, I've been praying about this for some time, so we'll have her come forward this morning and bring us that special gift in song.
Christ shall come with a shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God. Appreciate that. Amen, indeed. Amen. All right. Yeah, we talked about that, about having her come, especially right before Music Ministry Month. We get ready for that and just reviving the spirit of song here at Harvest Baptist Church. So appreciate that and looking forward to see everybody here. Let's open our Bibles today. Let's dismiss. Do we have Junior Church? Let's dismiss Junior Church before I forget to do that. Sorry about that. And as we dismiss Junior Church, let's the rest of us open our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 18. Luke 18. It's been some good songs today. Uh, you know, amen. Talking about the blessings of the Lord, talking about the blessed assurance of salvation, talking about blessed be the name of the Lord, talking about how great. Thou art. That's good. That's good. That's what we're here for, to, to sing the praises unto the Lord, to understand who's in control. You know, when, Christ, when all shall bow in humble adoration in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, God in charge of the kingdoms on heaven and earth, uh, he's in control of everything, isn't he? Amen? Oh, really? Is he? Is he in control or not? Amen? Yeah, there we go. Somebody gets it. All right, all right. Amen. God is in control and we can trust in him. And you know what? That's interesting because, yeah, sometimes we are like that. We're like, oh, God's in control. But you know what we're thinking? I don't like what's happening, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, I, hey, just be glad we weren't alive in Old Testament times when kings and rulers were in charge for 70 years or more, okay? Uh, yeah, exactly. So nonetheless, here we are in the book of Luke, and that's something not necessarily God being in control, he is, but something I want to talk about in regards to our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we're in the book of Luke chapter 18, we're going to start in verse number 18. Luke 18, 18. The Bible says in Luke 18, 18, And a certain ruler asked him, that is Jesus, asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. 
And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help me during this time we have together. Lord, I thank you so much for the singing we've had today. Lord, I thank you for the good spirit of fellowship that we've had today. Lord, there is joy to be had in Jesus Christ. Lord, in spite of the darkening, sin-filled, wicked world in which we live. But Lord, you tell us to look up. You tell us to look unto you, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, you tell us you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. So Lord, help us to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Help us to look upon you today. Lord, help our time as we have together. Lord, just show us what you would want us to see. Have us to have eyes that are ready to see, ears that are ready to hear, heart that is ready to receive your word. Lord, have your hand upon the junior church time as well. Open their hearts. Use uh, Eric in a magnificent way, or a teaching, and what he is doing there. And Lord, just I look forward to what's going to come of you here at Harvest Baptist Church. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we are, an interesting conversation in Luke chapter 8. It's also discussed in Matthew chapter 19. And some of you know of this is, the story of the rich young ruler. And the idea that I want us to talk about today, or the biblical concept we have, is it's not about what we can receive from Jesus. It's just that we receive Jesus. And he'll talk about that here in just a moment, but there's some things we want to look at in regards to the rich young ruler and his approach to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I think there's some parallels that we can draw from our own lives where unfortunately we too act like the rich young ruler. See, a lot of times we look at that and we think, huh, rich young ruler, look at him and what he's doing there. I'm glad I'm not like that. Do you understand that when we say that, we're no different than the Pharisee looking at the publican? I thank you that I am not as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give of all my tithes. And sometimes we look at the rich young ruler and sometimes we look at it in scorn and think, huh, I'm not rich, so I cannot be like the rich young ruler who had very much riches. But you realize that here we sit in Bay City, Michigan, United States of America, and we hear, you know, a lot of times, especially in this political season, about the 1%, the 1%, the 1%. Do you realize on a global scale, even the poorest of the poor here in the United States of America is in the global 1%? Uh, up on the much, much most of riches than, of this entire world. But that's not what I'm talking about today to try and point out at anybody. That, but really, when we read something in the Bible, uh, we are to draw reflection from it to see as to whether or not we fall into that category. Obviously, we cannot compare ourselves to Jesus. We are supposed to strive to be like Jesus, but we can't say yes. I am like Jesus in this matter, as I am good at rebuking rich people for their many riches. No. That's not the point of what Jesus is talking about today. Uh, there's an interesting conversation that we see right here that, again, we can draw from our own lives and see. And let's take a look as we walk through this portion of Scripture here and see what's going on in regards to the conversation between Jesus and the rich young ruler. It starts right there in verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So first and foremost, we see here he's all, all of a sudden using flattery. As we see here, he says, good master. And he, he's coming unto him, and he's really, you know, again, a lot of times when we go and ask certain questions, we're a lot of times looking for justification of our opinion than we are on a quest for truth. And he is no different. But he says, good master, you know, butter you up. You know, you know who else buttered up a good ruler were the wicked people in the book of Daniel when they went to Darius and they said, Oh, Darius, live forever. This Daniel prays three times. We ought to have an ordinance that they should only bow and pray to you. And Darius takes the flatter. Oh, yes, this is right. Please, allow me to sign it. Ah, it's a good rule. And then he said, Ha, ha, ha. Daniel must be cast in the den of lions. Using flattery. But again, sometimes we use flattery. You know, we need something from the Lord. And I'm not saying we're, we're coming there in regards to we should pray to the Lord in a spirit of reverence. But we've been running amok and doing all these different things, and all of a sudden it's, oh, good Master, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. You know, and again, we're supposed to use reverence in our prayers. But our mouth speaks one way, but our hearts and our actions speak another. Is I better be good, I better stand up straight and act right as, as I go to Jesus and come to him as the rich young ruler. It's no difference than sometimes my kids. 
And they love when I throw them under the bus in sermon illustrations, okay? Some of them come, dearest father, oh, daddy, ah, ha, 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 oh. And my answer is, what do you want? Okay, I can read it all over their faces. Again, I want my kids to come to me to ask for things. But it's like, boy, you've been grouchy all day long, and now all of a sudden you're happy because why? You want something, right? And we do that to the Lord. Good master, good master, right? Uh, and Jesus, fortunately, Jesus is, what do you want? Okay, and he doesn't do that here. He doesn't do that here to the, good, to the ruler, but he does call him out in his flattery. And we see that here. Uh, is where he says that in verse 19. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Okay, None is good, but save one that is God. And there's a couple of things here that we can look at this. Now again, this isn't Jesus saying, I'm not good. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, even before Abraham was, I am. And there's a great reference to him being the I am, being God in the flesh. So Jesus here is not really casting himself down saying, I'm, I'm just, you know, a person. Because no, he's God in the flesh. He's 100% God, 100% man. But what he's calling out is the way that the, the rich young ruler is looking at him. He says, why do you call me good? There's only one good that is God, and you don't see me as God, because you've called me what? Good master. There are many here all throughout the Gospels that understand that said, this is the Christ. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah that understand who he is and what he's all about, but not this individual. He comes to him, good master, he says, why do you call me good? He's like, you don't even see me for who I am. Oh, there it is. How many times do we go to the Lord Jesus and we don't really see him for who he is? The Lord and Savior, uh, the Alpha Omega, the great King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the provider, the one who can solve all of life's problems by just going to him and casting them at the Savior's feet. He says, why call ye master? There's only one good, that is God, is what he says. He's calling him out on that. But then he gets into the rest of it. But before we get into that, uh, interesting way of his approach of the rich young ruler. Not only one do we use sometimes some false flattery in approach to our Savior. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that if you walk away from this message today saying, well, you know what, Pastor, I'm just not going to pray anymore because I don't have a right heart about it. No, the idea is to get a right heart about it. And I've been guilty of that as well, sometimes being like, all right, well, I know I should probably pray about this. All right, Lord, help me with this. Really? That's pretty nasty. That's a pretty bad attitude to have. But what else do we see in regards to the request of the rich young ruler? Look what he says in verse number 18. A certain ruler asked him, saying, good master. What does he say? He says, what shall I, I do to inherit eternal life? Really, to paraphrase it, he would say, what do I have to do so I can get what I want? Ah, interesting. Jesus, again, calls him out of that. But how many times do we do that in our spiritual lives? What do I have to do so that I can get what I want? Now, again, the Bible tells us to cast all our care upon him because he cares for us. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. How much more will the Holy Ghost give to them, to those that ask him? Our good God will not withhold anything from him that ask him. And again, I'm not saying we're not to go to the Lord with our petitions and our prayers and our desires and our wants. As just as I, at the same time, would want my kids to come to me to ask me about certain things. But a lot of times, we just kind of cut Jesus off and say, All right, just tell me what to do so that I can get what I want. And we're missing the point. So, too, is the rich young ruler. And unfortunately, in some circles today, that is what is being sold as Christianity. That is what is being sold as salvation. You want these nice things? You want this wonderful stuff? You want all this stuff that Jesus says where moth and dust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal? Uh, that will be wood, hay, and stubble? That will be burnt when tried by fire? You want all this stuff? Just say the name of Jesus and call upon him, and he will lavish you with luxuries of this world. That doesn't say anywhere in this book. It doesn't say any of that. Again, it's not about what we receive from Jesus. It's that, what we re that we just receive Jesus Christ. And that's what we see here, and Jesus calls him out on that. And this is interesting. Uh, he says here in verse 19, or verse 20, so he says, Why callest thee my, uh, thou me good? None is good, save that is God. He says, Hey, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, Ha, huh, all these things have I kept for my youth up. You know what he is? He's a bargain barrel, lion, rot, uh, rotten, no good, bottom barrel, bargain, bargain, 
I can't even say it, it's so bad, all right? Terrible Christian. But we do that to God too. Look, you know, so many people want to do this in regards to the Christianity. Well, I mean, look what he says. Look what Jesus says. Now, again, these are the words of Christ. But he says, hey, he's like, listen, rich young ruler. Remember, he's, he's calling, him out, calling him out on some things. He's like, don't kill anybody. Don't, don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. Honor your father and mother. You know, and a lot of times that's some people's way of salvation. Hey, I should deserve to go to heaven. I haven't killed anybody. Really? Is that it? As long as you don't kill anybody, you get to go to heaven? Wow. You know, that's not the way it is. By grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. But so many times we want to ask Jesus the bare minimum. And we see that in his. What do I have to do? What's the one thing? What's the main thing that I have to do? Just one. Just one, Jesus. Just one. You only get one. Because if you ask me to do more, uh-uh. No, nope, too much. How dare you, Jesus, ask me to do anything else? How dare you require anything of me? I gave my life to you in salvation. You know, I did you this tremendous favor by calling upon you for salvation, Lord Jesus. You know, I've been saved. Isn't that enough? No, no, it's not. It's the idea of surrender, surrender unto the Lord. But yet we see here, he says, you know, Jesus, again, in his wisdom, and I tell you, we're, on Wednesdays, we're going through the book of John. And here as we read through this in Luke, and I've prayed for a burden, just help me to love Jesus. But when I see how Jesus deals with, I'll say it deals with me, because I know he would deal with me this same way, I love him all the more. I could see me standing next to Jesus as this guy's talking to him and me being like, <laughs> get him, get him, get him, right? You know. And But he gets me too, all right? But I, I just love Jesus more and seeing the way that he deals with things. And we see here, he's like, you know what, hey, whatever. I'm, I'm a good master to you. I'm not God in the flesh. I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the Savior. Tell you what, buddy. Don't kill anyone. Uh, you know, don't, don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. Honor your father and mother. And the rich young ruler thinks he's really onto something. He says, all these have I kept from my youth up. Liar. Tell me you can't. He's tell, told a lie. You know, he's done any of these things. Maybe not murder or adultery or maybe to an extent maybe theft. But we know that there's been lying. He's probably lying. He is lying right there. He says, ha ha, good, good, good. He's like, all right, I'm in. All right, uh, Lord, I've, I've done these bare minimum things, so I should get what I want. And that's the way we approach the Lord. All right, Lord, I went to church Sunday morning, went to church Sunday night, went to church, you know, and I even went on Wednesday, okay? And I did that, and all right, good enough. All right, bring on the blessings. Now, again, I'm not saying, you know, the, these different things, because there are some people that, that turn it and have a false way, you know, and say, you got to be here, you know, and do all these different things. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm getting at the point is so many times we think we just have to check off the boxes and that if we do that, we can turn in our report, and Jesus looks it over and says, well, all right, well, there you go. Here's all your blessings. Have a good day, you know. And that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about, okay. And, and we see that. All these things have I kept from my youth up, you know, and, and I almost sense some boasting in that. Huh. Not just, yeah, I do all that. He's like, oh, I've done all those since I was a kid. All right. And eternal life is mine. But then Jesus comes in in verse number, uh, verse number uh, 22. Because look what he says, now when Jesus heard these things. So again, he, he was waiting for his response. Okay, Now again, Jesus, om, omniscient, all-knowing, he knows what's going on. But he sees what the, the rich young ruler says, and he has another retort, a response for that. He says, yet lackest thou one thing. Okay, here it is. Here it is. I can imagine the rich young ruler being like, oh, okay, all right, just one thing? All right, good. All right, let me have it. What is it? Just tell me the one thing I need to do. How many times do we do that? We think, all right, just, just tell me the one thing. And he says, one thing thou lack. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. All right, here it is. Some people may be watching on live stream, and they're like, all right, here we go. Pastor Byler is asking everybody to reach in their pockets. It's about giving money. He's going to tell us we have to sell all our possessions. No, I'm not telling you that right now. Here's the thing. He's, he's calling them out. He says, yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast. Distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. He's really calling him out in the one thing that is an idol in his life, and we see that in verse 23. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. Why? For he was very rich. Okay, he calls him out on the one thing. And as time goes on, and sometimes we approach our Lord and Savior, we're always asking for that one thing that we may do, and perhaps it is eternal life. Now, there is only one thing. That's called upon the name of the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved. That is the one thing. But encompassed in that one thing is surrendering your life over unto the Lord. First and foremost in salvation, saying, Lord, I can't get there on my own. I need to get there by you. Please forgive my sin and come dwell within my heart and be my Lord and Savior. 
But the idea of surrender is something that's one thing as well. Surrender of our whole life, surrender of our whole being. And that's kind of what he's getting at. He's asking easy, is there anything else? He says, yes, sell everything. Give it up. Give to the poor. Follow me. And he says, do that. And, and for the ruler, it's just too much. We ask Jesus, what's the one thing we can do? Jesus asks us for the one thing, and we tell him it's too much. All of us have a too much. All of us have a too much. Where we get to that point to where we draw the line in the sand, and we say, too much. Too much. It can be anything. It can be the point to say, you know what? I don't need to be super zealous about Jesus Christ. I don't need to be all on fire for God. I'm content at where I'm at right now. Really, you're not content. You're complacent. You're lukewarm is where you're at. Jesus said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. You know why? Lukewarm is hard to deal with. Hot means, hey, you're on fire for the Lord. Let's go win the world. Let's get out there and do that. Cold says, okay, let me put some thorns and hedges in your way to bring you down to your knees so that you call upon the name of the Lord's salvation and, and, and come that way. But lukewarm, you're just kind of swimming in the warm water, doing nothing, going nowhere. And Jesus said, I would rather spew you out of my mouth. He says, you make me vomit when you're lukewarm, when you've drawn that line in the sand that says I'm saved and satisfied and I'm not going anywhere else. But we see that. We see that as soon as the ruler was asked to give of himself, it was too much. And that's the key. And that's the idea. See, again, he was asking, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I will do these things along with everything else that I'm doing. I will add this one little piece to my life so that I can continue going on my way. And you see, as soon as Jesus asked something from him, it was too much. Let me ask you this. What is Jesus asking of you that is too much? Because he is. I, you know, there's things in my life that I say, nope, that's too much. You know, that's too much. You know, you know would you be willing to whatever it may be? And, and, and what's my response to that? Lord, I need to give it all under your feet. I'm not standing before you today as professing to be any kind of perfect Christian. I have a line in the sand that I need to erase as well. We all do. You need to find that line in the sand, you know, that says, you know what, Lord, I will serve you as long as everything in my life is perfect. There's some people like that. As long as everything in my life is going according to plan, as long as everything is in its perfect place, as long as I don't have any hiccups or head bumps or, or stub toes or anything like that, I will continue to serve you. But as soon as one minor thing goes wrong, you know, some people are right there. Some people are saying, you know what, Lord, line everything up in my life to be exactly perfect, and then I will follow you. No, no, no. Was that the way for the disciples when he said, come follow me? They were in the middle of their business. They were mending their nets, and Jesus says, come follow me, and he says they forsook their nets and followed him. They didn't say, no, Lord, I need to finish mending this net. They didn't say, oh, Lord, wait, I've got this strong business. Allow me to sell it and, and get some things in order. No, Lord, allow me to do that. No, they forsook their nets and followed him. I like that illustration. That's a sermon I've preached before because a net is an idea of something that holds you back. What's holding you back from going all out for the Lord? What is your sell us the, uh, all that thou hast, give to the poor, and follow me moment? You know, some people do uh, uh, attribute that scripture uh, wrongfully to say, you know what, you shouldn't have any possessions. Jesus here tells the rich young ruler to sell everything that he has, so you must too. That's not, that's not biblical. It's not in there. He was challenging the rich young ruler to an idol in his life and asking him to cast down that idol that he had, and he would not do it. What is the idol in your life that says, I will not do it? Is it your, your perfect routine that you already have? Ah, you can't disrupt my routine. I've got things just the way that I like them. No. Is it, uh, you know, just uh, taking one more step? Is it, you know, we talked this morning in Sunday school about discipleship. Ah, uh, I don't want a disciple. I don't want a person with a bunch of problems bothering me, calling me, texting me, messaging me. I, I don't want to deal with any of that. Really? Well, you're no different than the rich young ruler. It's too much. It's too much. Oh, I don't want to witness. You understand what would happen to me if I witnessed at work? Everybody would isolate me. It's too much. It's too much, okay? You are very sorrowful. Oh, you know what? I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to tell anybody else about Jesus. I, I just want to lay low and, and, and be quiet and just go unnoticed. I don't want to take a stand. I don't want to stand out and look weird. Uh, that's far beyond me. I look weird no matter what I do. But nonetheless, you know, again, you know what? And as I say those things, those are all things I have said. Okay, those are all things I have said. And Jesus rebuked me for that. Okay, 
Because I tell you, if Jesus walked in this room right now, we'd be like, I know him, I know him. Ah, hey, Jesus, let's take a picture. You know, we'll do all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> oh, now we know him, but we can't leave this church service and proclaim to know, the, to know Jesus Christ. You know, we are light shining in the darkness. We are to call, we are to be, uh, you know, shining out in this darkening world. And Jesus is telling us to go out there. Well, this world's just going too bad, and you know what, I'm just, you know, that's the other thing we do too, is we say, you know what, Jesus, fix it. Things are bad around you. Come on, Jesus, just fix it. Go ahead and do that. Uh, come on now, come on. I'm going to pray, Lord, come down, and I don't know what the expectation is. I don't know what the expectation is if, if they just expect, all right, the, the Lord's going to sweep down and go into, uh, I don't know, NBC News, and the, the president's going to say, whoa, we're way off course here. Let's start following the Bible. Is that, you, know, you can see that on the news? You could, but you know what? It's not going to happen until anybody in high places gets saved. You know, it's not just Jesus fix this. Why, why do we want it fixed anyways? You know, it reminds me of the, in the book of James where it says, you have not because you ask not. But it also says, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. I used to talk about that when uh, Barack Obama was president. I said, I prayed for the salvation of Barack Obama. And, but was I praying for it in the right spirit? I'm going to pray President Obama gets saved, and then once he gets saved, he's going to do everything like we do, and he's going to be just like us. Yeah. Asking amiss, yeah. okay? Asking amiss. That's not why we want him saved. That's not why we want our governor saved, so she'll do what we want. Oh, rich young ruler, what good thing shall happen so that I can get what I want? That's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. Too much. Too much, okay? We must call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But again, going back to that verse in verse 20, that sounds a lot like the moral compass of our society. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. And isn't that interesting? Even an atheist would say, well, if you're just a good person. Now, an atheist will profess uh, to not believe in any God or any afterlife, but sometimes you'll get them to the point where they're like, you know what, you should just be a good person. So then you ask them, well, what is a good person? And they would probably say things like that. Don't kill anybody, don't, be, don't steal, you know, honor, honor one another, be respectful. Oh, really? Well, where does that standard come from? Well, I don't know. Everybody just knows that. Really? Everybody just, well, how do they know that? Well, so either one of two things happens. Either one, they say, well, that's just the way I live. I and mean, as soon as they say that, an atheist isn't an atheist anymore. They've just put them on the throne of God and made themselves God of the universe and the one that determines the moral compass for all of society. Or two, they just say, well, it just happens. We just happen to know. And that shows that they don't know and have kind of an agnostic attitude that there's something out there that puts that inherent goodness within us and that desire. And that is God. That is God. And that is where it comes from. But a lot of times society just says, just do these things and, and, and you should be good. And what? Everybody deserves heaven. Wrong. Everybody deserves hell. Okay? Because everybody deserves hell because it is our sin, past, present, future, that nailed Jesus Christ to that cross. When Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Is God turning his back on Jesus because the sin of the world was poured all upon him at that moment. And that's because of me, you, everyone in this room, everybody in this world that has lived lived, is living, and will ever live because of their sin has done just that, okay? So again, uh, it is our sin that has put Jesus on the cross, and there's no good thing, no good thing that we can do to be saved, no good thing that we can do to earn our way into heaven. If it is this way, if it is this way, if I can earn my way into heaven, then my God is a cruel God because he nailed his son to the cross for no reason whatsoever, he nailed his son to the cross as just a demonstration of his, his, his manipulative, narcissistic power to say, look what I can do. But that's not what he did. He nailed his son to the cross to pay the price for the sins of all mankind. So many people will say, why would a loving God send anyone to hell? He sends no one there. He sent his son to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins. He sent his son so that all of us could refuse an eternity in hell by calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Again, rich young ruler mindset says, what good thing must I do? God, serving you is too hard. Why would you send anyone to hell? Why do we always give God credit for the bad things when he is the glorious one for all that is good? Yeah. Why do we do that? How many times we have a, a trial, in our trial in our lives? God, why are you letting this happen to me? 
What do you mean? How about, God, help me see what I need to see through this. God, help me to glorify your name through all this. God, help me to grow closer to you through all of this. But so many times, God, I don't deserve this hard time. God, I don't deserve to go through this. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who said that? Job. Job, as he was covered in boils, that he thought it were in such pain that he had to scrape off with a stone. I've had some sores on me, but I've never thought of picking up a stone to scrape it off. That was a good idea to Job. Could not stand it. Lost children, lost property, lost everything. Covered in boils, three friends and his wife sitting around him. Curse God. I know what's wrong. I know what's all this. Blessed be the name of the Lord is what Job says. And that's what we should be saying too. That is exactly what we should be saying. Not, Lord, give me this one little small thing to do and uh, give me the blessing that goes along with it. And Lord, if you ask me to do anything else, it's too much. We need to surrender, surrender unto the Lord to his will for our lives. Folks, we will not see revival until we turn unto the Lord. It's Christians bowing down, seeking the face and the power of God is what's going to turn these things around. It's not Christians sitting in church just biding our time till God makes it better. It's us, 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 and sharing the light of the gospel. And it, us getting out there and being changed into his image, sanctified into the life of Christ. And it all starts with not, what good master, what one thing must I do? It says, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, I surrender all. Surrendering it all unto him. Oh, pastor. That's too much. That's too much. Again, I've been there. I said, wow, you want everything, Lord? You know what? He gave everything on that cross. Made himself out of the ivory palaces into a world of woe, leaving the right hand of the Father, coming in. And imagine that, being God in the flesh. God in the flesh, God of this universe, walking around, people looking at him, mocking him, scorning him. I've thought about that. After I got saved, I thought about that. Here's Jesus walking amongst people. Who is this blasphemer, sinner, wine-bibber, ah, and all these different things, calling him these names, and he's like, you know, these are my people. These are people I've created. I've done all of that. You know, Jesus gave it all. Do we sing it? Jesus gave it all. All to him I owe. You know, are we just going to carry a, a, a bill of debt unto our Savior up into heaven? Say, yeah, Lord, I owed you all. You know what? I lived a good life. Thank you so much. No. <laughs> we want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Surrendering our lives over unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are you saying, Pastor? i gotta, I got to just come up here and just blow the whole thing up? Maybe some of you do today. But you know what? Maybe some of you need to just come up and just kind of wipe that line out of your lives. Come up and say, you know what, Lord? I am sorry that I drew that line in the sand. It's gone. There's no more line there anymore. Maybe some of you are at that too much moment. And you are very sorrowful, like the rich young ruler, and you need to come forward and say, you know what, Lord, I'm sorry. It's not too much, because you gave it all for me. Maybe some of you today have not even called the name of the Lord Jesus for salvation. Maybe you're thinking salvation is too much. You think, I don't want to get saved. God asks so much of me. I don't want to have to give up this, give up that, do this, do that, go here, go there, read this, pray about that. It's too much. You know what? It won't be worth it when you're in an eternity in hell, in a place called hell, a literal place that is forever. It is a place of torment. It is not a place where you'll go and hang out with all your friends and throw a party. Unfortunately, you may be with a lot of your friends, but you'll be screaming out in pain and agony. As we know, as the other one, the, ri the other rich man with Lazarus said, just dip your finger in water and touch my tongue. I've got a glass of water right here. And you know, just that much. A little drip there, you know. That's all he wanted. And he said, nope, can't have it. How thirsty have you been? If, you, if, if some of you wanted me to, to do that and wanted to come, you know, that's COVID. Can't touch your tongue. But nonetheless, you know, <laughs> how many of you are this thirsty? Eh, mm, real satisfying. No, it's not at all. But that's all he wanted, but he couldn't get that. And he says, well, then, then, then send me back up. Uh, that, you know, if they see one rise from the dead, I love that story. It might be another sermon for another day. But he says, you know what? They have the law and the scriptures. They will not believe, even though someone rise from the dead. It was a picture of what Jesus was going to do. But at the same time, we see that. You know, they have the scriptures. They have the word of God. They have this universe in which we live in that cries out to the name of the Lord. Everything is in reaching out into worship unto him. They have all of it before him, but they will still reject and deny because it's just too much. 
it won't be too much. It won't be too much to give it all over unto Jesus. And that is my challenge to each and every one of us today. Get rid of the line in your life. Scratch it out. Rub it out of the sand. Find that too much moment and say, Lord, it's not too much. Lord, I am not enough and surrender it unto him. And those of you that have not called upon the name of the Lord for salvation, trust me, salvation is the way, the truth, and the life. It's the one thing you are missing, that empty spot that you have that you've been trying to fill with the ways of this world only fit for Jesus Christ. Put him where he belongs in your life in the center of your heart and begin to grow in him. It's not too much. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we have together today. Lord, I just thank you uh, for your son. Lord, I thank you that your son didn't count it too much to, to live a sinless, perfect life, to be mocked and scorned, and to be hung up on a cross, but Lord, only to be resurrected on the third day according to the scriptures. Lord, help us, I pray, as we just make our decisions today for you. Lord, help me to rub out the, the lines in the sand that I may have. Even if I don't know of them, show me where they are. And Lord, I, I want to be obedient and erase them. Lord, if there's a moment in my life where I say it's just too much, Lord, help me to surrender that unto you. And Lord, if there's anyone here today that needs to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, let today be the day of salvation. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's everybody stand to our feet as the music begins to play. The Lord has challenged you to make a decision. Come forward and just take a knee and just turn it over unto him. The song is just as I am. And that's how Jesus wants you, just as you are. He's not waiting for you to get perfect. He's not waiting for you to fix things in your life. He wants to help you with that. He's the only one that can. Come forward, take a knee and say, Lord, I surrendered unto you just as I am. And the Lord will help you to become who he has made you to be. If you've never heard in regards to salvation and what it means to call upon the name of the Lord, whether you're here in the service, come forward, ask me, I'll show you the way to salvation, that you will know not only that you'll be on your way to heaven when you die, but that you can live the life here on earth that Jesus has called you to live. If you're watching on the live stream and want to understand what it means to call upon Jesus Christ for salvation, leave a comment saying, I want to be saved or something to that effect. We'll see it and we'll help you and show you the way through the Bible what it means to have eternal life. Still have some people doing business up here at the front. I'm not tearing for the sake of pressure, but if the Lord's speaking to you, I would encourage you to either come forward or take a seat where you're at and just turn your life over unto him. us during this time, those of us that have made decisions. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to obey them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, we got our song of the month here. He has made me glad. Today's been a glad day. Started out with wonderful rejoicing, great singing. Thank you again, Gloria, for that special. And uh, you know, I look forward to, to many things that the Lord's going to do through music month and just the way we've had all day. It's good to see some visitors. I pray that those that are visitors would become regulars. All right, so keep on coming. And in the meantime, let's sing, He has made me glad. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is the joy that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Come back tonight. God bless you. You are dismissed.